you hear the name King James, your brain probably doesn't go to the British monarchy, correct? No. No. <laughs> Instead, you're probably thinking about what we're thinking about, basketball and the legend LeBron James. Even if you know nothing about basketball, you know who he is mm. and you know he is one of the greatest athletes of all time. And that idea, how sports can be a great unifier in all our lives, yep. is explored in a new off-Broadway play. The fan is short for fanatic, and I don't like being one. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's a, it's a different word. It's not short for fanatic. Yeah, it is. No, it's for like fan, like an electric fan or something. <laughs> Why would that be the case? I don't know, because we're cool. <laughs> King James is a story of friendship and fandom. Mm -hmm. It stars Glenn Davis and Chris Perfetti, men who become friends as they bond over basketball. You know, very, very relatable and very, very sick. Probably. <laughs> and look, here they are. Here they are. Glenn and Chris joining us live this morning on New York Living. Hello, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank Thanks you for, for having us. us. Congratulations. It. Congratulations on the show. Thank I did you. notice, I don't know if you peeped this, they were debating, do we watch ourselves? Do we not watch ourselves? <laughs> uh, no, I was glued Chris, to Chris, no way, Jose? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And me, I'm like, yes, I want to see exactly, I want to take notes on myself. He's watching what, tape. What do I want to change next time I do it? Yeah? yeah? Did you want to change anything? <laughs> no, that was great. <laughs> that was great. He was, he's Flawless. like, I knocked it out of the park. That's right. perfect. That's right. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so we have to ask, are you both basketball fans in real life? I, I grew up a lifelong basketball fan. I'm a huge basketball f basketball fan. Grew up in Chicago, so. Oh, number 23? Number 23? The, the 90s Bulls, Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Yes, all day. <sighs> Chris? I am a die-hard fan for the duration that I am working on this play. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. Fair that's all. I'll say. Enough. Yeah. But the play is the play is is very much about basketball. Yeah. But I mean, to me, and the thing that attracted me to it, it's 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 about life, and yeah. and more than that, you know, sports is kind of this vehicle to talk about, in our case, uh, friendship and um, humanity. You know, the state of the world. So yeah. so if if. Even if you know nothing about sports, I think this play is, is for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We were talking in our, in our production meeting this morning. Um, I have brothers, brother-in-law, men in my life, and I find that my observation as a woman, looking at them, it is hard as an adult to find, for, for men to find other friends. Mm. Yeah. How did you bring, do you experience that, and what kind of sensibility did you bring that to your individual roles? Yeah, I think after a certain point in your life, you stop sort of making new lifelong friends, you know? Except and you, Yubik. Mm. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> um, but, and the chemistry is great. So, uh, but I think that my, uh, my observation of this play is one that sort of Rajiv Joseph, our great, fantastic writer, um, sort of infused in the play, and that was, he said he wanted to talk about uh, male friendship. Yeah. and male bonding. And he says, I just don't see a lot of plays about that. No. And so he used sports as the vehicle and the celebration of LeBron, this sort of mm -hmm. deity, as the vehicle to, to <laughs> oh, sort God. of deliver yeah. this, this relationship to our audiences. Yeah. I mean, that's a smart man right yeah. there, the writer. Very, very yeah. smart man. So it's very interesting because as far as the cast goes, it's you two and a DJ. So, <laughs> I mean, how, how, what's that dynamic like? Well, the the um, the conceit is that the play is broken up into four quarters, right? Like so a game. Oh, like a game. Like a game. Okay. Yep. And the DJ serves as the sort of halftime show, mm -hmm. the sort of uh, um, all the pomp and circumstances going going mm -hmm. going along with the play right. itself, with the game itself. Um, so Do they give out free T-shirts like at the? You got to, you got to <laughs> you come. Gotta come. Oh. You got to come see. You gotta come see. find out. It's a great time. It's a, it's a you you walk in and you like oh I'm at an event. Yeah. It's not just a play. It's an experience. It's an all encompassing thing. Yes. It's interesting because you, I knew that the format was it was like four quarters yeah. of a yeah. game, um, and how does that play into your timing as a stage performer? Is it any different? Because I would have to think there's got to be a certain set of timing. I am a huge sports fan. I also work in sports. By the way, if they need a PA announcer, I'm free. We got you. Um, we got another you. <laughs> but how does, that, how does that work in terms of the timing? Because surely there are beats that you're hitting. Um, yeah, I think Rajiv, as Glenn said, you know, is a, is a brilliant writer and, and plays when they're good are usually about kind of the best and worst days of people's lives. And, and so he smartly kind of just takes uh, four scenes, as Glenn said, that are really monumental to these guys. Mm -hmm. And um, you see them over the course of 12 years. So you see the day that they meet, 
and you see kind of every aspect of a friendship that you can. You see them hurt each other and right. and support each other and betray each other and and because it spans so much time, it's not just an hour, you know, um, like a basketball game is. Um, uh, you see, you get to, you really get to know them. Right. Um, and you kind of dive deep into their history and and hopefully their future. And their relationship <laughs> sort of tracks along LeBron James's career, which is now spanning 20 years. And I, he's the, you know, he's become the all-time leading scorer in yes. the NBA this season. So the sort of play is, is um, you, it's, it's a sort of a watchful eye over LeBron from, from when he was a, a prospect coming into the mm -hmm. NBA to who he is now. Um, but also the, the, the playwright wants to explore how meaningful moments in LeBron James's career become meaningful moments in these guys' career. Okay, you know? so when he leaves yeah. and he goes to the Greenwich Boys and Girls Club <laughs> to say, I'm going to become a member of the Miami Heat. Yeah. That's a pivotal moment. It's pivotal touched moment. on in the yes. place. <laughs> yes. It's we, touched on. We explore it a little so bit. So yeah. has, has Mr. James himself... Uh, chirped in your direction regarding the, the production? Have we heard Sent from him? Sent you a gift basket? I think he's a little preoccupied at the moment. <laughs> I think he's, I think he's trying a to win a championship. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we, we only did a whole um, show about him. Little thing, little thing called the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. We did a, we've done the play in Chicago at Stephen Wolf Theater, and then we did it in Los Angeles at uh, the Mark Table Forum, and now he, doing it in, here in New York at Manhattan Theater Club. But when we did it in Los Angeles, LeBron James's uh, company is called Spring Hill, mm -hmm. and many of his... Um, uh, employees came to see the came to see the show and really loved it. So Good. it was great. Phew! Yeah. All right, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. What is your hope when folks leave the theater? What kind of feeling or lesson are you hoping that they walk away with? I'll just say very quickly. I think of this as a sort of platonic uh, uh, love relationship mm -hmm. between these two men yeah. who explore themselves, society, culture, uh, sports, sports figures, sure. um, and they do it. You know, in this sort of um, over the twelve-year span of their, you know, their initial part of their relationship, you get a chance to, to see yourself. Yeah. So hopefully, you come into the play and you say, "Hey, I know that person. Right. I, I know this. people like that, or that's me." You know, mm -hmm. we sp explore fandom, what it is to be a fan yeah. or we fanatic. Take, you know? We gotta take the fellas to we see this. The yeah, you got to. We gotta we take got the to. fellas. Before and we, we have leave, to also. We gotta mention Abbott Elementary. Yeah. Jacob, thanks. <laughs> love you. What Thank do we get? She does. Can, I, literally, we had, one of your, we had one of your we had one of your co-stars. Uh, William was here on Monday. The janitor. Um, we won't tell you what he said behind your back. But, Stan um, the man. Yeah. <laughs> What's that experience like for you? What's it been like? It's amazing. I'm like I'm 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 usually never happier than I am right now, which is like in rehearsal for a new play. But but Abbott and and everybody who works on Abbott is um, is really a generous. Genius, yeah. and I'm I'm I love going to work there, and uh, I can't wait to start season three. Wow, we oh can't wait gosh. to watch. And thank you. Speaking of generosity, thank you too for being so generous. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. And Best of luck. Else. Break Please. a leg. Mm -hmm. You don't need it. Uh, previews for King James, by the way, start May second at New York City Center, Stage One. Mm -hmm. For more information and to buy tickets, you can visit ManhattanTheaterClub.com.